Hello and welcome to another episode of X-Ray Tech. Today we are going to be making an automation. This automation is called the Auto Link Saver and it's going to capture all of the links, the URLs that you send into Slack. It's going to put them in an Airtable so you can reference them later. Now the reason that we would want to do this is depending on the channel or depending on your team, you probably send quite a few URLs and you might not always have a chance to look at them. Uh, or actually go back and make sure that you read them. Uh, now this is really useful for things like research uh, or things like competitors or even new tools that you want to explore and see if they're better than the tools that you're using right now. So our clients love this automation because it organizes all of the URLs that are sent in all their Slack channels uh, and it makes it really easy to find later on. So let's get into it. So let's head on over to Zapier and actually build this automation. So this automation should take you about five to 10 minutes to make. Uh, it's really basic and we're gonna go through every individual step so that you can do it on your own. And of course, in the resources down below, there's also a link to this automation and to some other guides that we've made that can be helpful. So the first step is to add a triggering event. Now that triggering event is going to be in, Z in Slack and that event specifically is a new message posted to a channel. Zapier has a ton of options. As you can see, you could trigger it off of an emoji reaction or whatever new file gets added or even any public channel. But for the sake of this video, we'll just use a new message posted to a specific channel. You pick your account um, and then we actually set up the trigger. So we're gonna use the tutorials channel in the X-Ray Slack and we're not gonna trigger this for bot messages. Now, the reason that you would wanna do that and, and not trigger for bot messages is because sometimes you might accidentally create a loop where an automation would keep looping and looping and looping and running and that just makes a mess. So don't trigger uh, your automations based off of bot messages, especially on Slack. So then we test the trigger. And when you test the trigger, um, you could get any number of messages as you can see here. Um, for our example today, we're going to use this message because we're interested in the text field. So I recently posted in the tutorials channel um, this message along with a Washington Post article about how Slack just got acquired by Salesforce. So we're going to use that and you can see in the body of this uh, when we do the test trigger, you actually get a whole bunch of information uh, about this message from Slack. And this is everything that Zapier can see. So um, it's definitely more information than you really need. Uh, but for this example, we're really only gonna focus on the text field, which is the first field that comes up uh, in our test data. So let's continue. Uh, you'll notice in here, this is only continue if. This is a filter by Zapier. Now, any message that gets posted to the tutorials channel will trigger this automation, but we only want to capture the things that include a URL. So how do we restrict all of the messages that could get posted and only capture the ones with a URL? Well, there's a couple of steps. The first is only continue if this text, right? You have access to all of these items as a, um, like from Slack, and we're only interested in the text. So only continue if the text contains, and this is a whole bunch of different logical statements, right? You can say it contains or doesn't contain or um, exactly matches. There's a whole bunch of, of variables that you can add here. Filtering is a really useful feature. Uh, and we're saying HTTP. So HTTP gets added to all of the URLs inside of Slack. And you can see in our URL up here, we're on zapier.com, but if I hit the left key, all of a sudden you see that HTTPS. It's really just kind of a hidden thing inside of URLs that Slack automatically applies to URLs. Um, and it's so that you can just click and open it up right away. So we'll continue. And in this case, your zap would have continued. So this big green banner right here lets us know that the text that we had does contain the text HTTP. Now, if we went back here and switched this to a different message, um, 
You can see there's not even, this is a robotic message. I just added Anthony to one of our channels. And if we go down to the filter again, and we test this, it doesn't work. So this is an example of someone just saying, you know, a normal message, a normal text-based message that doesn't include a URL. This filter would stop it. So none of the other steps, steps three, four, and five, would end up running in this case. And that's why we use a filter. And a filter is really important um, for automations like this that you that collect, you know, that are triggered more often than you'd actually want to uh, use the automation. So we're gonna switch this back to post D that includes the URL and continue on and just make sure that this is working. Yep, green means go. So let's, let's continue here. So the next step, step three, um, is the URL extraction. So uh, we're gonna use an app called Formatter by Zapier. And Formatter has a lot of different functions between text, numbers, utilities, and date and time. For this example, we'll use the text uh, form formatter. And again, there's a lot of different options here uh, between extracting a phone number, uh, you can even do things, more advanced things like regex, uh, which would be a whole other video. Um, but in our case, we're just gonna use the simple extract URL. Makes it really easy. And the data that we're gonna input, see when I click on this, uh, the values, the input field, I, I get uh, all the information from steps one and two. This is really how Zapier handles autom automation and handles variables inside of building an automation. So we can grab this one text field. Uh, and again, this was the first thing um, that, that Slack gave us when we pulled our sample data. Um, so we're just gonna use that as the value in here. And you can see it says, you know, this is a great article, we should study how Slack grew organically with Teams and then posted that URL. So hopefully when we click continue and test and review, boom, we actually got the entire URL exclusively. So we didn't need to do anything fancy to cut out all of the just normal language. Uh, this URL extraction was able to do that for us. So now we have the URL, we have uh, a filter that made sure that the original message had the URL, and we're capturing a specific channel's messages, okay? So let's go into step four, uh, which is going to be an Airtable to create a new record. So let's head on over to Airtable and see how that is formatted. This is the template Airtable base that we set up for you here. It's really simple, it's, we call it the Slack saver, and it's all about the Slack URL. So there's only four fields here. There's the URL, the message itself, who sent the message, and then the fourth field is a created time. And we don't need to mess around with that, that's why there's a big X there. Um, Airtable is going to auto-populate the created time based on whenever the record gets created. So let's go back to Zapier and then fill in these fields with the variables that we've already extracted from our automation. So this is step four and we're gonna create the saved URL record. So the app is Airtable. The action is gonna be create record. And again, you have a handful here, just create record, update record and search um, for Zapier inside of Airtable, but we're just gonna create the record. So let's continue. And now we're going to select our base. So like you saw, the base is Slack Saver. The table is gonna be the Slack URLs and the URL itself. Well, that was step three, URL extraction. So I can just click on that uh, and that is there. The message body is gonna come all the way from the first step. Remember that text from step one and the sender well, that is going to be right here, the, the second step. So the username of the sender, that was me. And the created time, see how there's a big X here? We're just not gonna deal with it. We don't need to put anything in here. Um, and one of the neat things about using Airtable is that you get to name these fields 
And I like to put emojis in these fields so that you can actually see what you should or shouldn't do. So for me, hands means uh, something that you're actually gonna input and X means, you know, don't touch it. So that's uh, some of the information that gets transferred here. Now, if you're not familiar with Airtable, uh, you might be wondering, well, why should I use Airtable as opposed to Google Sheets? Um, Airtable really is Google Sheets on steroids. Uh, you really get to do a lot more with Airtable. And this is an example of being able to name the fields. In Google Sheets, you're typically just dealing with column names like A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, but with Airtable, you get to name them and all of those fields have their own IDs. So you're able to refer to them and do a lot more complex things later on. Uh, but again, for this example, we'll just try to keep it simple here. Uh, and you know, it's just four fields that you actually get to see the emojis with and uh, helps you figure out what you need to do. Um, and this is a, a trend and a tactic that really pays off when you're dealing with hundreds of, of records or columns uh, inside of Airtable for your more complex uh, and intricate automations. So let's continue, let's see if this works. So let's, uh, this button, test and review, let's actually test and review this, and success. So let's head on over to Airtable and see what happened. Perfect, so let's look at this data and I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Awesome. And here we go. So we have the URL, uh, we have the message body, we have the sender, and the created, uh, created time automatically got filled in for us, which is super nice. Uh, it's a great function of Airtable. So that is how we get it into Airtable, but I always like to add one more step to my automations, and that's publishing a message in auto updates. Um, so auto updates is a Slack channel that we have inside of, um, inside of our Slack. And let's see, it's right here. And you can see it actually sends us a whole bunch of information all the time. Any automation we have running, we have tell us that it's running inside of an auto updates channel. Um, everything including uh, even error notification like that. Um, so it's super, super useful when you're dealing with your entire automation infrastructure. Um, and really that's what all these videos are about. Um, if you're curious about how to build an automation infrastructure, definitely check out the channel and we'll get into some other details about that. Um, but for this automation, we always like to just say, hey, uh, let's we published something inside of our Airtable and it worked. Um, and that's really for the people who aren't building the automations. You might be the only techie type person on your team that's building things in Zapier or in Tegramat for that matter. And having an auto updates channel is a really simple way to just tell everyone what's happening behind the curtain of automation. So let's go back to step five and finish this thing up. So uh, first, the, the first part of step five here is gonna be sending a Slack, uh, sending a channel message. Um, you can send a channel message, you can send a direct message. Again, there's a lot of options in terms of actions that you can do inside of Slack um, with Zapier, but we're gonna send a channel message. And then uh, let's get into the details of that. So, so we're gonna put this in the channel called auto updates and the text is gonna be we just saved a new link into the Slack saver base in Airtable. And why don't we actually include that link too, just in case somebody wasn't a part of that channel and they're curious. Uh, so we'll do that. And also check out the base here. And we can just head on over to our Airtable, grab that URL, and we can just paste it right here. Um, so there we go. So that's the message. We're gonna send it as a bot. Uh, we'll call this the 
We'll call this the tutorial bot. And a nice robot face. We're gonna include a link to the zap. That's always a good habit uh, in case something does start looping, you can immediately click on that link, come to the zap and turn it off. Um, so that's always the best practice in my book. Um, you definitely wanna include a link to the zap. And auto expand links, no. Uh, just kind of save space. There's no reason to get the whole image and you know, all, that, all that stuff. Uh, and link usernames in the channel, yes. Schedule at, no, we don't need to do that. Uh, file, there's no file that we need to send. Thread, we don't need to put this in a thread. Oh, my Slack channel's going off. And uh, broadcast to channel, no, we don't need to do that either. So uh, we'll just hit okay. And we're gonna test this um, step two. So we'll hit test. And look what we have here. Uh, our tutorial bot says we just saved a new link in the Slack saver Airtable base. We can go to the link and we could also click on this and go right to the uh, Airtable base too. So I hope this was helpful. Um, we are done with our automation now, so we can click this blue button here to turn on the zap. And there we go. So this, uh, this is actually gonna be the share link that I uh, include in the description down below. So if you, you know, pop open your, uh, if you were to click on this link, you'll be creating um, a copy of this. So Slack filter by Zapier, um, and you can connect your own Slack account, configure the required field. Um, how, yeah, this is how this, this automation works. So you can adopt this automation with one click uh, right in the description. Um, you can configure that field, uh, grab the URL, connect your Airtable, right? All of these things, Zapier makes it super easy for you to adopt you know, any automations that we create here at X-Ray. So we'll be making a ton more videos like this, uh, showing you some of the best automations that, best and simple automations that, that we've created to help save time and keep information relevant um, and help you do your best work. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, as always, links and resources are in the description down below. And don't forget, keep the flow.